Border X may have a little competition this year for crowd favorite. Snowcross is the first motorized event in the history of the X Games. It's a sight you just got to see, folks. Powerful racing snowmobiles maneuvering in packs approaching speeds of 60 miles per hour, hitting jumps that propel racers some 20 feet in the air. Calling the exciting action for us today, Greg Creamer and Paul Page. Here's some of the key guys in this new export of Snowcross. Chris Vinson is one of the most powerful riders there is. He says X is the ultimate. It's the most important race that I've raced in my life. Um, I came here to win, and I'm going to leave with a win. Finland's Tony Heikkinen has come a very hard road for a young rider to end up at the X Games. Injuries in the past years have been very difficult. And then there's Canada's Blair Morgan. For him, this is absolutely, without question, the most important event ever in the history of snowcross this would racing. Be the equivalent to probably the Indy 500 or you know, uh, Daytona. You know, this is going to be the ultimate snowcross race, and uh, you know, whoever wins this one is going to be the the man. Those are some of the key players, but who's going to be the man is anybody's guess. Now, what we will see is a series of heats with eight sleds, and then we move to two semifinals, a last chance, and a final. The final heat of round number one sees Blair Morgan, Mike Rivard, Justin Tate, Dave Brown, Earl Reimer on 100 is very strong, and Jesse Stregg. Now, you're going to keep an eye on a very important riding style here with Blair Morgan. 7C Blair Morgan, he's upright, he stands. It has been very effective. He has a number of wins already this season, and the thing that really pays for him is that he doesn't tire as quickly. Now, another guy to take a look at is Superfly, Jesse Streg. This guy can air it out. He's having a lot of fun. He switched back to Arctic Cat this year. He's pumped. They'll all jump up or down on the back of the sled a couple of times to get that track planted as best they can. Then they direct their attention to the flagman, who stands just off to their left. Up the incline, a 30-degree rise up the side of the mountain. Into that first left-hander, Stray, very strong up the hill, followed by Blair Morgan. Watch his stand-up style. Four-way battle for the lead. Boy, they get bottled up coming down the mountain. That could be a problem. You saw that tire go flying. Somebody went off the track to the outside. We'll watch that. A head-to-head -head battle for the lead as they come down through the S's. Morgan and Strag fight it out. Jesse Strag on the start. He's got an EFI, a fuel-injected motor. It's giving him a little bit quicker response. That's paying off big right now. They are tight at the conclusion of lap one. Streg, Morgan, Rivard. Now they spread out. Difference in lines. That's Streg as he comes up the hill, makes that left-hand turn into the tabletop. See how quick he made that turn when we were on board. He turned in and was already around the corner. But he has got pressure right now. Streg and Morgan. It is still the battle at the front. And it's hot and heavy. They come flying down the hill now. Into the hairpin. Boy, Morgan's working all over Streg. Streg, the green 99. Here's your leader. Look at that. Morgan tried to check up and square that corner off Streg. He covered it beautifully. Morgan on 7C tries to get around Stig. They come up the hill. Morgan made the move. It may have paid off. Over the jump at the bottom, Morgan actually angled to the inside, got in the throttle a lot sooner, and it did pay off. Huge. Coming up the hill, Streg takes the lead and then begins to, or Morgan takes the lead, begins to motor away now from Streg. Rabard continues to sit in third place. Those two Articats really checking out just a little bit right now. And now we'll see whether Strike was holding Morgan up just a little bit. Well, Blair Morgan, the 22-year-old Canadian, pulls away from his teammate, Jesse Strike. Makes that final jump. Morgan had the fastest lap last time around, but look at Earl Reimer, number 100, laying back and forth. He was second quick that last lap. Earl Reimer is a very impressive rider, also a first-year pro. He picked up the nickname Airborne, and he loves to air it out. This track suited to him, and he's riding very, very strong. Working the final lap now. 
Blair Morgan. Rick Kramer playing him out to you at the start. And this is the reason why, as he drives away from his teammate, Jesse Streg, and Mike Rivard currently running in third place, and he will, without question, take the win here in the final heat of round number one as we move down determining points and decide who will move into the finals. It's Blair Morgan, Jesse Streg, and Mike Rivard. Blair Morgan, a perfect example of practice makes perfect. He's been working this move in practice. Watch where he comes down when he turns in. Right there, that ski is on hard packed snow. It's dug in. He's on the gas, and he is rocketing up the hill. And Streggy really got trapped on the outside, and he ended up on some fluff. Watch it again. There's Morgan to the inside. He's on the gas. Look what Streg's doing. Just sitting there spinning, throwing up snow. No bite at all. Now, take a look as he comes over the valley jump, the upright riding style. Two things to note. Where's his foot? Most of the rider's feet are up in there. His is back. Now, the other thing is look at the angle of his back and where his shoulder is. Right over where his foot is, his roll center, he's in complete control of that machine at all times. So Blair Morgan has laid down the challenge, taking the win here in round one in his very first heat. We'll have more from the X Games Snow Cross after these messages and a word from your ABC station world of sports. Number 46, Vermont's Chris Vincent. Winning at Winter X for him is an obsession. Now the specs on these sleds are fairly simple, though most of them are about 450 pounds. They cost over $20,000 each, and they are very, very high tech. Snowcross really challenges the mechanics too. The second heat of round number two, here's the way they line up with Vermont's Chris Vincent. And then from Oregon, Dennis Burks. Rapid City, South Dakota's Greg Hyde. Earl Reimer, a Canadian. Troy Shandon from Oconto, Wisconsin. Per Bergren from Sweden. Mike Rivard and Jesse Streg, both from Minnesota. Unquestionably, this is the guy to watch. Chris Vincent, he, they call him Big Air. This is a track perfectly suited to this guy's style. He is pumped. Another guy, though, that's going to be strong is gentleman. Uh, is this gentleman, number four, Greg Hyde. He is running incredibly well this season. He's not flashy, just fast. And when they come off of that valley jump, all they can see is mountaintops. It must be an incredible view if you're driving one of these sleds on Circuit X. That third sled in is 1S Per Bergeron. Watch him. He's a Swedish multiple champion. Bergeron bumps. Vincent comes out with a poor start. They come up the hill, heading for that first left-hander. And look at that. Dennis Burke takes the lead through the left-hander. Vincent is way back in the pack. He got buried on the start pile. It didn't work for him. And he's got his work cut out for him. 27, Dennis Burke's the leader. Jesse Streg on 99 in second place. Battle is back there about third right now. For the surprise for Chris Benson, he sits well back in this fight. And number four, Greg Hyde, that white Polaris, is into third. A good start for him. But look at where Vincent is. He's still buried back there in that yellow, on that blue Yamaha. Greg and Hyde battle it out for second place. Now, in reality, that battle breaks off. In the background, we just saw Vincent wiping his face. He's getting all kinds of slop. Visibility's terrible when you're that far back. Yeah, the problem of running back third, fourth, fifth, and you got to take everybody else's snow and eat it. Vincent's still trying to make a move. But it's not working for him in this heat. There's Vincent, the blue number 46. Nothing changes up at the front. It's still Burke, Sprague, and Hyde. Vincent trying anything he can right now to try and get around Reimer. He's got to move up a little bit. That's the man he's chasing. Well, there's an interesting fact. Look at that. Vincent, down there, number 46, was second quick that time around. But still, where he is in the field, whoa, he almost brings it back over. Where he is in the field keeps him from moving forward. He's fighting traffic, most notably, in number 100, Earl Reimer. He tried to cut underneath Reimer, and Reimer sensed it, shut the door on him. Meanwhile, number four, that's Hyde, has moved into second. A great passive strength. 
So back up at the front of the field, it remains Dennis Burks, number 27, who is the leader of this run. Second place is Greg Hyde, number four, and 99. That strike sits down in third. Once again, Dennis Burks with a great start, and he is just motoring away. Oh, look at this. Earl Reimer has moved up into third place, just all of a sudden jumped into that position, and that breaks off his, by, his battle with Vincent. What a good move for Reimer, number 100. Leader remains Burks, then Hyde, then Reimer. Suddenly, Strag and Vincent have disappeared. They may be having some problems. Looking awfully good for Dennis Burks right now. Boy, what a shock that's going to be to the snowmobile community, especially with Chris Vincent sitting back in last place. Good look at Dennis Burks working that mogul field. And again, you've got to pick your line through their terrain reading. So as they complete the fourth and final lap here, Dennis Burks takes the win. Followed by Hyde and Reimer. The big surprise, Chris Vincent finishes last. Now, Chris Vincent right here, he had a huge problem off the line. And what it essentially was, was he didn't go anywhere and it buried him in the pack. Watch this start. Looked okay, but look at he's just getting swapped outside and inside. He did not get any launch off the line. Now, that Yamaha is a triple. It breathes well, but it doesn't have any torque compared to some of the others. Now, watch this. He's trying to make time. That was interesting. Watch right here. He hit a big jump, and he stands it right on the tail. He would have gone over backwards, but right there, he just gassed it. Look at the roost coming off. He saved it with power. It's the only way you could do that, but you have to be brave. And now he carried so much speed to the top of the hill, he gets a big bunch of roost, cuts over, and almost manages a move on Earl Reimer. Remarkable. Well, Chris Vincent is really bummed. Well, he has had problems on the start. He had a bad finish in that last race. He's in trouble. So coming up next, the final round of heats. Will Vincent make it into the show? High flying finishes. However, as you saw a short time ago, Vincent finished last in his previous heat. But he still has one last shot to redeem himself. And as Paul Page is about to tell us, you never count out a determined racer like Air Vincent. The thing that I love the most about the sport is the adrenaline and racing against the best. Nicknamed Air for his fearlessness in jumping beyond the limits of his sled, Chris Vincent is the embodiment of the new snowcross racer. Handpicked by Yamaha Factory Racing to be their poster boy for the circuit. Most of the racers will be shooting at this self-proclaimed rider to beat at this year's Winter X. But behind his take prisoner style, Chris is a man from a small town in northern Vermont where snowmobiling is a way of life. I think the riding out here in Vermont is awesome. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without the riding in Vermont. This is where I've learned to ride. This is where I've excelled in my racing. The snowmobile trail system here in Vermont is just so awesome. I mean, you can go out your doorstep and ride a snowmobile. And with the terrain here, I've also been able to understand how the sled's going to react. You have to learn the limits of the vehicle. Snowmobiling has always been a part of the Vincent family, from Chris's early racing to their successful snowmobile business. And it's something me and my father always wanted to do is have you know, a business, a snowmobile business. So we picked up a franchise, and the race came to town. So I went down, entered sport division, won everything that weekend. The following weekend I went to pro, and I've been racing pro ever since. Chris's bad boy reputation precedes him. He's a rider that is constantly on the edge and always pushing his sled past its limits. This sport is so extreme because of the heavy vehicle that you're driving. And when you've got a 500 pound sled in the air, you just can't change the direction. So maybe people stay a little bit away from you on the corner. Maybe well, with that type of reputation, you can do whatever you want when you get on the track. But pushing the limit can have dire consequences. It's an Earl Shumley, a huge stumble! Huge stumble! It's Hibbert and Vincent have both gone down! I was very, very lucky with that, that accident. And I wouldn't want to ever see that accident happen again, because I don't know how I made it out of there without broken body parts. The following weekend, I was racing. That's how much I love the sport. I just, I love to be on the track. If there's a race and I can be at it, I want to be there. The thrill of the sport is winning. I believe my biggest thrill is when I win the X Games. 
I'm going to do everything that it takes. Here at Snowcross, already a number of incidents. Well, first Chris Vincent had a bad tumble, then Noel Kohansky, a rather violent snap off the sled. And Tony Heikkinen suffering some mechanical problems. The clutch guard coming loose, he threw it out, thought it was taken care of, took him a long time to get restarted and back underway. Then, Kirk Hibbert, physical problems, he's so weak from the flu, got bumped off track by Aaron Shield. Shield went on to win it, Hibbert's ailing. So, we've had some excitement already, there is a great deal more to come. This is round three, heat D, it's the final heat. It is very meaningful to these racers because it will help determine who goes to the finals and it's really up in the air. Jesse Stragg, Chris Vincent, Brad Pake, Brent Herman, Blair Morgan, Jim Beck Jr. and Bob Hankins. And Chris Vincent, remember he had a terrible problem earlier to guarantee a position in the finals, he's gonna have to finish first or second. Absolutely, I mean, he can make it if he finishes a little further back, but if he's first or second, he's there. Now, Blair Morgan has a little room. He's a top qualifier. He can score a little bit further back. The problem for him is don't lose that focus. Don't give it up. He's had a good day to this point. You don't want to get overconfident, end up off the course and in big trouble. Chris Vincent still lying well back, did not get a good start. Now he joins the pack, but Blair Morgan comes around the outside, picks up the lead. Blair Morgan just hammered around the outside of the top of that hill. Look at that onboard. Jesse Stregge, he thought he had it. Morgan said, no way. Jesse Stregge is right behind him, and then Brad Pake. <laughs> Second for Strang out wide and going right with them is the, I think that's 61, Brent Herman. Nice move on the skidoo. And Benson right there in fifth. Brad Pake drops back to third as Strang came around again at the bottom of the hill. Morgan, Strang, Pake, Herman, and then Vincent. Chris Vincent is in trouble. Oh, what a move by Vincent. Vincent right to the inside around Herman, moves into fourth. Oh, look at the air on Chris Vincent. He is charging now. Morgan, Pig, and Vincent. Huge air by Vincent on the downhill he loves so much, and he used it to make a pass. That puts him in second. If he stays there, he's in. So Chris Vincent falls well back, comes forward, shows the stuff of which he has made. What a race it has made here. Still, Morgan out in front, Vincent in the second. Pate is in third place right now. Morgan looked to be a little tentative in that turn at the top of the hill, turn one. Vincent hammering, closing in a little bit, and he doesn't have an option because he may have luck at the air. He may have gotten around Pate, but Pate isn't going to give up. Yeah, but Vincent's going to do everything he can to, to move forward. Blair Morgan, the 22-year-old Canadian, handling up the front of the field, but a remarkable run by Chris Vincent. Unbelievable. Look how he still continues to close. Well, early on, Vincent had a terrible hole shot, and it cost him. They adjusted it. He didn't get up the line as well as he wanted, but his race has been nothing short of brilliant. Brad Pake well back in third. Back with uh, Blair Morgan. You see that once again, when it goes smooth, that's when they're in the air. When they land, it's a jolt. They run across the top. Down now for the valley jump. <laughs> Morgan handling very well. The hairpin jump. Chris Vincent right behind him. That's quite a distance to make up for the short distance they have. Final left-hander. One more jump at the finish line ahead. And Blair Morgan, who's having one great day, takes the win. Two firsts and a second. And Chris Vincent with a remarkable run. Now, Chris Vincent knew that to get in that first or second finish position, a great hole shot would make his job easier. He didn't get it. Look at that. Didn't get a great timing off the line, and then he just lugs up the hill, and everybody blows by him. He's outside of that top five.
<laughs> However, sometimes you got to make something happen. And on the second lap, look at this. He's so far off to the left, he's not even in your picture. But he is a man with a plan. Watch this. He's outside of the top five. There he is, fourth. Now he's by striking to third. A great start to that second lap. Still on the second lap. Big in, Chris Vincent Sherman. He's inside. 53 Pake. He's second. A rather productive half lap. Chris, there was something you had to do in this race to make sure you got in the finals and you didn't get the start again. No, I didn't get the start, you know. We were having a little trouble getting off the line, but I was able to hold that throttle just a little bit more in a few spots, a few places. Really helped out, you know, got me out in front. Now, your pass was about as spectacular as it gets when you moved into second place where you had to be. You like that part of the track, don't you? The track works for me there. Um, I think that big jump, you know, I just kind of aired out a little bit more. You know, just get on that edge a little bit longer, and, and it just helps out in, in those areas. And in that position, I, I need to do that, and so I did it. Well, and of course, when you came across the line, you pumped your fist. You knew exactly where you had to be, and you knew you were in. Yeah, you know, with, with the run before I had, I was, you know, getting uh, a little mentally disturbed, but you just got to clear that stuff out of your head and get out there and do what you got to do, and, and that's what I did. And to come out second, I was pretty happy. We started with 28. Here are the 16 that will move to the finals round. Two semifinals, a last chance, and then the feature, the race that will determine, as the racers put it, the man in snowcross at Winter X. We'll have coverage on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern, Sunday of the finals. Uh -huh. For a while there, it looked like Air Vincent was going to suffer the agony of defeat, but it's on to the finals where he hopes to experience the thrill of victory. More traditional racing next Saturday right here on ABC at 12.30 Eastern. We're going to death. What I love the most about the sport is the adrenaline in racing against the best. Nicknamed Air for his fearlessness in jumping beyond the limits of his sled, Chris Vincent is the embodiment of the new snowcross racer. Handpicked by Yamaha Factory Racing to be their poster boy for the circuit. Most of the racers will be shooting at this self-proclaimed rider to beat at this year's Winter X. But behind his take of prisoner style, Chris is a man from a small town in northern Vermont where snowmobiling is a way of life. I think the riding out here in Vermont is awesome. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today without the riding in Vermont. This is where I've learned to ride. This is where I've excelled in my racing. The snowmobile trail system here in Vermont is just so awesome. I mean, you can go out your doorstep and ride a snowmobile. And with the terrain here, I've also been able to understand how the sled's going to react. You have to learn the limits of the vehicle. Snowmobiling has always been a part of the Vincent family, from Chris's early racing to their successful snowmobile business. And it's something me and my father always wanted to do is have you know, a business, a snowmobile business. So we picked up a franchise and the race came to town. So I went down, entered sport division, won everything that weekend. The following weekend, I went to pro, and I've been racing pro ever since. Chris's bad boy reputation precedes him. He's a rider that is constantly on the edge and always pushing his sled past its limits. This sport is so extreme because of the heavy vehicle that you're driving. And when you've got a 500-pound sled in the air, you just can't change the direction. So maybe people stay a little bit away from you in the corner. Well, with that type of reputation, you can do whatever you want when you get on the track. But pushing the limit can have dire consequences. It's an oh, somebody, a huge tumble! Huge tumble! It's Hubert and Vincent have both gone down! I was very, very lucky with that, that accident. And I wouldn't want to ever see that accident happen again, because I don't know how I made it out of there without broken body parts. The following weekend, I was racing. That's how much I love the sport. I just, I love to be on the track. If there's a race and I can be at it, I want to be there. The thrill of the sport is winning. I believe my biggest thrill is when I win the X Games. I'm going to do everything that it takes. An accident very similar to what happened to Chris Vincent happened yesterday at the X Games. You can see it tonight during our coverage that begins right after this sportscast at the top of the hour. And even more coming your way at 9 Eastern on ESPN2. Tonight at the Winter X Games, Greased Lightning, 
Snowcross racers Blair Morgan and Chris Vinson aim for maximum acceleration. And Skier X contenders careen against the slope. with only minor injuries. <laughs> Welcome to Crested Butte, Colorado. Chris Fowler along with Chris McKendry. In the next hour, plenty of that free skiing, free for all you've already witnessed in that crash off course. Tyler Williams' hip was dislocated, obviously excruciating, but thankfully, as with Jason Jones, his injuries not more serious. And for the motorsports gang, the X Games motorsports style gets a little bit of a head start while NASCAR is in the garage until Daytona's sunshine will bring you to Circuit X. And that's where we begin tonight with 16 semifinalists remaining in the snowcross competition. Captain Kirk Hibbert is not a stereotypical X gamer. He's 40. The oldest snowcross racer in the game is a 25-year veteran of the sport. That's three years longer than Blair Morgan's been alive. But Hibbert is a typical X gamer in that he's not afraid to try something new. So when Morgan found success using a motocross stand-up style, Hibbert decided to try it. Well, Paul Page and Greg Creamer call the first semifinal heat. Warriors are ready. Men like Chris Vincent of the United States, strong, powerful, but winless this year. Or Finland's Tony Heikkinen, the high flyer, the last big winner. Or Blair Morgan of Canada, who has a totally unique riding style. Yeah, I think you're not getting beat up as much, you know. You're using your legs, it's some of the suspension take up some of the jars and hits of the big jumps and uh, I, yeah, you know, if you hit a big jump and you land sitting down, you're going to hurt your spine or something like that. You know, it just feels natural. You just got to stand up and take the hit. The challenge is the same for every driver. Well, this track offers up hits in abundance. And as you can see, they start right off the starting line. They go off the top of the hill, a big double down over that huge air at the bottom into this hairpin. There's a stutter field right down here and then into the start finish jump bigger there. The first heat of the semifinals, four, will move directly into the finals. All eyes now move to the starter. The eighth are positions chosen carefully. Up the incline, about a 200 foot rise in elevation as they come. And look at that as Kurt Hibbert takes the lead and come across the outside. The old man is on it. Beautiful move by Hibbert, and that's one S. Bergeron right behind him. They had great launches, and that is Burks in third. Bergeron and Burks challenge. Boy, look at the fight as they come down now. Heading for the hairpin jump. Hibbert's up and over it. Now Bergeron closes in. There comes Burks. They run one, two, and three. Fourth and fifth are right there as well. And let's not forget that fourth place is really the key here in the semifinals. The first four go direct to the finals. Now, look at this battle for fourth place. That's Craig out in front, but Blair Morgan is closing in. Comes down the inside, sets him up. And look at that, Morgan drops to the inside and gets past him. We've seen that before. Paul Blair Morgan knew that move would work. Let's go back to the prelims and look at this pass that was made a day before. That's Morgan on your left. That's Streg on the right. He goes way wide. Morgan on the inside. And look, that ski digs in on hard pack. The track is there. And up the hill, Morgan goes. He perfected it. He used it again. Front remains unchanged. There's Blair Morgan sitting back and trying to get into this field. Again, riding a little hard like that, he may be looking for some information when the race is done. Here's what we need to do. It's just With that one off, Blair Morgan moves into fourth place. He stays there. He moves to the final round. Pepper, Burks, Bergeron, and Morgan. Those will be the four transfers at the end of this run.
So Kirk Hibbert is in, the old master. And of course, Claire Morgan has found his way into the final round to search for the championship, but still struggling. Chris Vincent, will he be able to make it in? And what about Tony Heikkinen? Remember his problems throughout the day and season. More semis coming up. Still to come on Winter X. Skier X athletes. The Winter X Games are brought to you by Pringles. Check out the two ounce snack stack size. The perfect size for slamming the stack wherever you're styling. By Taco Bell. Want some? And by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Here's the way it works. Two heats, eight sleds in each. The bottom four out of those heats go to a last chance final. The top four go on to the final round itself. Second heat of the semifinals. Again, the top four move to the final round. From North Branch, Minnesota, Aaron Shield. Greg Hyde out of Rapid City, South Dakota. Boise, Idaho's Jason Jones. David Brown from Pocatello, Idaho. I think the whole city is here to watch him. Tony Hagenen from Finland. And Chris Vincent out of Exit Junction, Vermont. Errol Reimer from Vermilion Bay, Ontario, Canada. Lynn Felker from Loveland, Colorado. That's the lineup. Paul, here's one of the gentlemen we're going to be watching, Chris Vincent. He slid into this race by the skin of his teeth. It didn't go the way he would have liked, nor did it go that well for Tony Heikkinen, who was on the yellow skidoo. He had problems as well. There's a good look at Tony, the flying fin. And let's keep in mind Aaron Shield, bit of a surprise on the green Arctic Cat, second qualifier. Wasn't even going to be here when the season started. Well, he made it pay when he did. You know, it's a surprise to me when you consider Tony Heikkinen's uh, record the past couple of years of injuries that he's even standing on that sled. The launch. Heikkinen got a good start. And a battle for that corner. Greg Hyde gets it. Hyde moves into the lead. Heikkinen battles with him. Big tumble right there on that tabletop. One of the sleds running down the hill. That's number five, David Brown. Well, David Brown out of it right there. He needs help, serious help. Medic. Obviously, David Brown is okay. We'll check on that and make sure it's absolutely true. The hesitation was whether or not they might stop it. Look at Heikkinen as he comes inside now, Greg Hyde. Well, that's Still, that. Hyde holds that corner. Key corner there, and he worked him, but Hyde was able to get the exit speed. A little bit better speed at the exit. Holds it up to the hill, but now Heikkinen working the outside. Aaron Seal is third place, and in fifth place right now, Chris Benson, not good enough to make a direct transfer to the final. Aired him up the hill. There's 100, Earl Reimer. That's fourth. That's the victim that Benson's got to run down. And is that hiking it off? Oh, no. Out of that battle with the leader and suddenly off course. So that changes the front of the order. Which hides still in the lead but brings Shiel into second place, followed by Earl Reimer. And it also brings Chris Vincent forward, so he's in the top four, the positions that will transfer to the final. Unbelievable hiking when he went off in that deep powder, just couldn't get moving. And that's exactly what Vincent needed. Again, he's just skating by here. Take the position any way you can get it. At least it means he doesn't have to race flat out now because there's no real competition directly behind him. But I think Paul of concern to Chris is the same problem that plagued him in the qualifying rounds is back. Bad hole shot. Back up to the front, Greg Hyde, unchallenged for the lead. Chris Benson sitting in fourth place. The last of the positions that transfer into the final round. Benson riding at mobile field very aggressively. And he knows he needs big launch up the hill right here. Looks back, he's got room. Four through once again. No change there. Moving into fifth place now, Lynn Felker. Tony Heikkinen being scored on the course in sixth. We'll keep an eye on him and let you know what's going on there as well. 
But at the front, no change. Hyde, Shield, Reimer, and Vincent. Whoa. Boy, it is roughing up out there again. All that snow we've been getting is changing this track very quickly. Lap in, lap out. Here's a good look. The green machine heading up the hill. Aaron Shield, a surprise. He's very talented, but he hasn't shown this consistent front running speed yet this season. He's peaking just at the right moment. He's got a glimpse of the interval back from the leader. Now we switch it over. That little white line it shows you the end of the transfer into the final. Right now, that spot's occupied by Vincent. And really, Lynn Felker's not up there where he can challenge Vincent at the moment. There's a good look at Earl Reimer, and that's Greg Hyde, who is sort of the quiet champion. He's not real flashy, but he can get the job done. He's done it a few times already this season. He's doing it again here. We're going to have to keep track of the interval. Look at that. Down to a second and a half as they move to the final lap. So in reality, Aaron Shield closing in a bit, but remember, victory not necessarily the object here. Well, you're not going for those points like we did in the prelims. You're just going to be in the top four. You're going to transfer. They've got a lot of room. Again, a good opportunity to eat back off a little bit, save yourself as well as the equipment. Yeah, that's assuming you're disciplined, but if you're a racer, bragging rights are worth it. Easier said than done, absolutely. And now making the turn into the hairpin down the S's. Greg Hyde, unchallenged for the lead, no challenges in the top four. Hyde makes the turn for the finish line jump, takes the checkered flag, Greg Hyde, and then Aaron Scheel, Earl Reimer, and finally Chris Vincent makes that turn off the corner, runs for the flag, and for a berth in the finals. But up the hill, there is some concern. Jason Jones was involved in that incident early on with David Brown, and he is hurt and in pain. Here's what happened. Now, you know, one of the real risks is on these big doubles. Right there, look at that. If you're not doubling it and somebody else is, that's what happens. Look what happens here. That's Earl Reimer. Now, there's Jason Jones off to your right, lower screen. He's landing. He landed a little short, and Dave Brown is airing it out and just clipped him. Now, look at the onboard. Here comes Brown. There's nothing Brown can do, and Jones has no idea what's coming, and here it is. Frightening video. We will keep track of Jason Jones and let you know about his condition. But right now, up on the hill, guess what? He's up, he's coming down the hill to the cheers of the crowd assembled around Circuit X. Boy, is that bravery. So Jason Jones, obviously a problem with his left arm. Tony Heikkinen, what are the problems here? We have absolutely no idea. He's going to have to go to the last chance qualifier if he's going to make the finals. But the best news is Jason Jones is actually injured, but all right. What you're seeing here is a miracle. Now let's go to Skier X. Mike Adamley and Bill Carey. If you build it, this and feels more like a snowboarder. In a Garth Brooks sport, Blair Morgan prefers the smashing pumpkins. And in his rookie year racing snowcross, the 22-year-old has been smashing rivals with a smooth stand-up style borrowed from his summer job, reigning Canadian motocross champ. The kid from Prince Albert may soon be King Blair, consistently taking first place while feeling a little out of place. Pick him out in this crowd? No way. Yeah, he likes wearing stocking caps and, you know, cool sunglasses. Yeah, I think I'm a little different than most of the guys here. Secret ingredients. Wish I had peach. Blah, 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 blah. I would make it uh, two and a quarter. All the sideburns are uh, kind of a different thing. Well, it's all two incher. Just trying to change my looks all the time to be different. Oh, I need a mirror. I usually went to the truck to do it. I can feel it, especially having this altitude. I need a... Sure it sticks on there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty normal, I think. I was listening to, like, 311 or Smashing Pumpkins, even some Puff Daddy, you know, and then. And I used to snowboard when I was in high school, and you know, I'm not, I don't really like those bright colors, you know, I usually use the earth tone kind of style when I'm in dress normally, but for some of us, we have to wear the bright stuff for safety reasons. Tony Heikkinen changed it a couple years ago, and he brought it to a new level, and then hopefully I'm going to bring it to another new level. Yeah, I think I'm a little different than most of the guys. 
Morgan wears that team jacket because they pay him a lot of money to wear the team jacket, but those guys definitely sticking out in Crested Butte. I think Morgan would rather kind of blend in and hang out with the snowboarders, but he has developed his own style there. He certainly has, and about his stand-up style, you know, he said his idol, his hero is Captain Kirk Hibbert, and Hibbert's still riding at 40, and the way that Morgan stands up when he rides, it saves his back a lot of pressure, so he could be around for many, many years, too, because his legs take the impact. It's a fun sport, and he's a good driver. A lot more coming up in Snowcross as Blair Morgan searches for speed in the Snowcross course. He's one of the top candidates. Snowcross racers showdown on the Butte. Chasing speed, efficiency, and sensation. Still to come on Winter X. Just coming out of the Houston clinic after the doctors have looked him over. He can see he's alert, awake, walking. He's got some damage, though, to his left shoulder, a separation and laceration. Here's how they moved out of heat A of the semifinals to the championship. Hibbert, Burks, Bergren, and Morgan. And then out of heat B, Hyde, Scheel, Reimer, and Vincent. Tony Heigen, a big surprise to be in the LCQ, but he has had nothing but problems since qualifying unfolded. Another gentleman you've got to be wondering about is Dave Brown. Right there, number five, he was in that accident with, with Jason Jones. You wonder about his mindset right now. So seven rather than eight on the line. There's Tony Hankinen over on the left, zero six. Strike couldn't get by him on a repack. Heikinen on 0-6. Here he comes. Well, they've really strung out in this last chance. Tony just landed and he heard something, I think. And he landed, he suddenly just paused, shook his head as if to clear some cobwebs. Oh, and he's got a problem. Oh, and this could make a difference because Steg is very definitely on the charge. Tony Heikinen looks back to see whether or not he's going to have to give it away. Already, Crapo takes the win. The battle will be for second place. Can Tony Heikinen actually hold off a charge? Final turn. Steg is right there. Ah, but Tony Heikinen gets it done, and he moves into the final with obvious difficulty. Something wrong. Look at Tony. He's just trying to hang on to the sled, and he is in some pain. Well, it's been an adventure getting here, but there are the ten. Out of this lineup will determine the man. One thing that we have learned throughout the competition here is that often the race is won in the first second. It's all because of the hole shot. The reason is really twofold, Paul. One, you've got a tremendous carve and elevation going up the hill. And two, visibility. If you're not in the front, you've got a lot of snow dust. Now, Blair Morgan became the top qualifier because of great starts like this. Conversely, Chris Vincent struggled an awful lot in qualifying because he could not get a good launch. Heikinen, he's had some great starts today. But right now he rides injured. His right heel hurts. He's ridden that way before. As we are ready now for the final round, they've actually had a false start. That's why there's that second row. And Tony Heikinen is back in that second row, so we'll keep an eye on him. The flag ready. We're ready for the final. Here we go. Heikinen charges. 
Oh, what an even start that was. Look at Heikkinen. Up the hill, into the lead. From the back row, Paul. Breaks into second place. That is an absolutely unbelievable start by Heikkinen from the back row, leading to the top of the hill. I think he wants this. Heikkinen, Hurts, and the old man, Kurt Hibbert, in third place. What a remarkable story that's been. And look at the battle for third. I believe that is 100 Earl Reimer who has tipped over. That takes him out of this pretty much completely. And Paul, look at the lead Heikkinen has opened up. As he jumps up the hill, rides on the tail. Most of the way up, you see it's unlike Chris Vincent. Chris Vincent in trouble. Sled on its side, one of the uh, officials there, and Vincent is there as well. So this looks to be more than routine. It looks quite serious. They try to get the sleds slowed down as they come through this caution area, and they stop the race. Meanwhile, let's take another look at Hiking and Start. You see him circled in that back row. There's the launch, and look, it's partially hiking, and he timed it beautifully, but the clutching is absolutely dialed in. His crew doing a great job, and he's riding it, just pinning it to the top of the hill. He gets there first. Remember that exit speed? Look at the launch out of that corner. Just beautiful. Yeah, but up the hill, because of this incident with Chris Vincent, he pinned underneath the sled. 450, 500 pounds on top of his left arm. They are stopping the race once again. And while we wait to see how Chris Vincent is, let's send you back to Chris McKendry and Chris Fowler. And thank you, Paul, as the crowds wait for the race to continue. We'll have an update right after this break from Crested Butte. Second miracle of the day. Chris Vincent is up all right, and he's going to ride once again. The Winter Warriors are ready to do it again. Already one lap is counted into the record book, so they line up single file. Tony Heikkinen out in front. Chris Vincent all the way there in the back. He is not scored with a lap, so he really has his work cut out for him. Poe in second. Finally, they make it through that first turn. Burks in third. Over the valley jump for the first time in the final round. This will determine the championship. The medals will be awarded at the end of this run. Oh, look at this. Morgan in trouble. Came down the hill in sixth place. He's going to get back into the fight. Darrell Six, Tony Hyken in the yellow sled in front. Huge, huge problem for Morgan to be that far back, obviously. Vincent and Morgan at the back. The competition fading for Tony Hyken a little bit. He is opening up a pretty substantial lead, Paul. Ernest Crapo in second place, unchallenged. Battle is back in third. And Dennis Burke trying to hold off Pear Bergman. Right now, Heiken is benefiting huge from that visibility, but that was an awkward landing, and he hurt his heel in the last chance race, so he's in a bit of pain out there. He's got to be a little careful. His right heel came down hard, and so he has the favor. Boy, doesn't look like he is. Is this a study in courage or what? He saw him take that little look back so he could see the margin back to second place. Oh, that which is great, though. It's a pretty good one. That gives him a little bit of space if he needs to save that heel. Berks across the line in third. Berger in fourth. Vincent remains one lap back. That's an impossibility for him. Watching Heikkinen, but also we saw the gap. Nobody behind Crapo at this stage, so Burke's fading a little bit. Working lap number four of six. Tony Heikkinen, who comes into this championship round from the last chance qualifier. That lead group of two, and I mean, there's a nice space between Heikkinen and Crapo, but there's nobody behind Crapo. I'm not sure whether that's just the pace these two are setting, or there was a problem that created that gap third on back. Well, the fast laps count for him. Oh, and Chris Vincent in trouble again, off the sled. It's definitely the end of the day now. That was
was going to say Tony Heikkinen has turned the fastest lap every lap of this run. Well, look at the sled of Vincent. He stuffed it into the bales pretty good, but he had bailed off before it got there. Good thing. Chris Vincent came here with so much hope. It's all gone now. And number nine, Crabo is on. Who was in second place. As they were coming to the white flag lap, Crapo came off. That brings Birch forward and Pear Bergman to third. Final lap. Look at the interval. Forget it. This thing belongs to Tony Heiken. Bought and paid for. He's already showboat with the crowd, giving him the thumbs up. He knows he just needs to just tiptoe around. And the only question will be, what will he do when he gets to the bottom? He's probably thinking about it right now. I can wave, I can jump, I can Superman. With that, with that heel, it's going to be a wave. And he probably feels this is just dessert. You remember those first two starts, he nailed them both. They were taken away both times. He's earned this one. So Tony Heikkinen comes from behind and scores the win. There's a man who overcame every problem. Injury, mechanical trouble, in from the last chance. Let's take a look at what happened to Chris Vincent. He hits a kicker right there. Normally would have been no problem, but I think Chris, that arm, just not strong enough to hold on. He struggled. And Blair Morgan, his problems as well. Look at that. Just bumped right off that sled. Tough day for those two primary contenders. No such problem for this guy. And the big news of the day, the question was, who is the man? The answer, Tony Heikkinen of Finland on a skidoo. After some of your problems early in qualifying, did you think maybe there was just no way you were going to be able to win this? Sure. I, I was very, very upset, and I was like, if there can't be so much good luck in the whole world that I can, I can make it happen anymore. And, but I still, uh, when they kind of got me mad when they put me in the second row after the first start, when I was in, the, I was going, leading going in the corner, and I was pushed uh, in the first corner. I tipped over, but. That's the rule, so we had to go go with it. But I just got mad, and I was like, I'm coming from behind now. <laughs> For Tony Heikkinen of Finland, the gold medal in snowcross at Winter X. The United States, Dennis Burks takes the silver. And from Sweden, Per Bergeron takes the bronze. But nothing for Chris Vincent. Except perhaps Paul immense disappointment. He wanted this so bad. And Blair Morgan, who was in there but couldn't get it done. Those two contenders were a big story. Interestingly enough, though, it was this gentleman, Tony Heikkinen, who brought extreme to Snowcross, who went extreme when the time counted. A brand new sport, the Winter X, Snowcross. The Winter Warriors came. They crashed. But ultimately, they conquered Mount Preston Butte. Welcome to Winter X Snowcross. You have one great future. And congratulations to Tony Heikkinen. But after that, congratulations to everyone who came there with their snowmobiles. It was a great show. Thanks a lot. Chris McKendry, Chris Fowler, there's no pain in Victory Lane.